Welcome back to Dr. Rose Helps You Here. I'm Stephanie Rose and I'm an audiologist. Today's video we're going to be talking about Meniere's disease and also cochlear high drops or autoimmune inner ear disease. So all three of those have very similar symptoms and a very similar prognosis um, for treatment. So they're treated kind of the same way uh, and I've already done a whole video on Meniere's disease, possible treatments and things like that, so you can check out my channel if you wanna see more in depth uh, uh, treatment procedures and things like that. But today I wanna to talk about the emotional aspects of having a disease like those mentioned. So um, a lot of times society will talk about the disease itself, how it can affect the ears, um, what kind of symptoms it produces, and just really briefly, it's usually a, a fluctuating hearing loss for cochlear high drops, usually in the low frequencies. And for Meniere's disease, it can be starting off in the low frequencies, become a tent shape, and then flatten out over time to um, a profound sensory neural hearing loss. Other symptoms that are correlated with this are fullness of the ears or aural fullness, and also tinnitus or buzzing, ringing tinnitus um, in the ears or roaring sound sometimes. Uh, the other a portion for Meniere's disease would also be vertigo that comes on with attacks, and these can range from mild to incredibly debilitating. I myself actually have been going through this whole motion of all of these different uh, diseases. So it kind of started off as cochlear high drops. I had no vertigo, just fluctuating hearing loss with buzzing and fullness. Um, and I basically had that for about nine years. Um, and then I started getting vertigo, uh, and in between that transition, uh, I also tested positive for an autoimmune disease. So I really do believe that these are all interconnected somehow, and they're all just variants of the same, possibly the same underlying disorder. So um, I wanted to kind of reflect on my personal journey of when I first lost my hearing. Um, it was very strange. It was really late at night. I was having school the next day, and this was my first semester of grad school. Um, I remember feeling a kind of like a hot sensation deep inside of my ear. I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced this. Please feel free to put that in the comments. But it was a very, very hot, hot sensation. It was almost alarming um, to have this hot sensation in my right ear. And then the next morning we were doing sound checks on the booth and for whatever reason, I thought that the right earphone was having a problem. And it turned out that it was my hearing. Um, it was startling at first, I was a little scared. They ordered an MRI to make sure it wasn't a tumor, which was also kind of a scary process. But the word that I really used to describe how it felt to be suddenly a single-sided deafness patient is debilitating, um, or not, not necessarily debilitating, but uh, defective is the word that I like to use. You can't find where your phone is when it rings, you feel lopsided, it kind of puts you off balance. So all of those things uh, definitely come into play with your emotions and learning to accept that you have this new problem. And of course, we all try to find the cure and go crazy, you know, Googling things and trying to, you know, dictate uh, every little thing in your food diary that you've eaten to see if it's something that's causing it. Um, but I really feel that it is related to autoimmune um, uh, functions with me. Um, and other people have described, you know, depression that can be an effect of having this disorder or one of these diseases. Um, so it can be very depressing because you used to be this very active person and suddenly you're not so active. Um, there's also sort of a disbelief that can happen sometimes with not only the patient, but with family members. So it's a very invisible disease when you have a, hear a sudden hearing loss. Um, and if you have vertigo and you're falling over, that's maybe a little bit easier for a family member to accept, but not always. Um, so there is this kind of a uh, almost of a rejection feeling that you can get from family members and friends who maybe don't believe that you have this problem. Um, so it's very important that we talk about these things and kind of discuss that, yes, there are very emotional aspects to having ear disorders. Uh, it can affect your job, it can affect your friendships and, 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 and building you know, rapport with, with strangers when you have to suddenly tell them, I'm, so, I'm, I'm not meaning to ignore what you're, saying, what you're saying, I just maybe didn't hear you correctly. 
Um, and with this, you know, fluctuating hearing loss, it's hard to put on a hearing aid. A hearing aid does not fix the distortion and the um, fullness that you're feeling in your ear and possibly, you know, occluding your ear might make that fullness symptom even more pronounced. Um, and so it can be pretty miserable. Um, I remember my, probably my, I want to say fifth year into my cochlear hydrops, I started my first job out of school and it was extremely stressful and stress really affects my, ear, my ears and my hearing. And I had really bad buzzing tinnitus and it was to the point where I actually asked one of my coworkers, he was actually my boss, if he would treat me for my tinnitus using, um, I think it was a sound cure device, just a, a sound therapy type device that you can wear to kind of distract your brain from the buzzing. And I have to say that that was probably one of the, the most wonderful things that I experienced was being able to control uh, my tinnitus and have a little a tool in my toolbox, if you will, that I can, can, I can put this thing in there and I don't have to hear that buzzing. So with all of these other aspects of the disease, you have to keep in mind that um, you're going to go through many emotions. Now that I've had it, uh, had the hearing loss since 2009, so we're looking at, you know, 12, 13 years now, um, the vertigo is a newer thing. So that started less than a year ago. Uh, it's probably been about, I don't know, seven or eight months now that I've had the fluctuating vertigo. Um, and what's really interesting is that at the end of a spinning dizziness episode, um, my hearing comes back to normal suddenly. So I think it has something to do with the pressure releasing in there and all the fluid going back out and then the hair cells can move and dance again to sound. Um, with that being said, uh, my, my husband has really learned how to navigate around me. So he knows that if I come home and I'm having a hard time, uh, definitely, you know, help me get up the stairs, maybe get my purse out of the car because there's no way I can, you know, get it. I also meant to mention that once the vertigo came on, um, I found myself being incredibly anxious because it seemed to come without any warning. Um, so I was very, very attentive to how I was feeling prior to, and now if I ever feel slightly off, I just immediately start going home and get somewhere safe. It takes a little while for it to come on, so I do have a good amount of time so that I can drive safely and get home, and then it will hit uh, you know, within, within an hour after getting home. Um, and the vertigo lasts for you know, at least six hours. Um, so, and that's gonna vary from person to person, but I just wanted to mention that it's hard to walk around with anxiety, you know, wondering if you're going to have a new, another attack. So that's another emotional aspect to Meniere's that we don't really talk about very much. So um, I read in one of my Meniere's forums on Facebook, there's great groups that you can join to, you know, express your feelings that you're having, maybe, you know, see if there's any tips or tricks that other people have found work for them. Um, I did come across just several people that say that we never talk about the emotional aspects of having Meniere's or, you know, other ear disorders. Uh, so that's why I made this video. So if you know someone who's going through it, just tell them that you, you've, you know, you're there for them and if they need anything, be helpful. Um, and it's, it's very uh, isolating at times. So just be a good friend, be a good family member. Even though you can't see that they're sick, they are sick. It is a very debilitating disease sometimes and everybody has to figure out what their triggers are so that they can function and get through life. Um, I have to really watch my stress and I've also found recently that exercise really helps curb my symptoms. I have had very little aural fullness. I haven't had any hearing drops and no vertigo for the past three weeks um, since taking on jogging a, a couple to a few times a week. So I'm going to continue to do that. Just do, you know, whole self, whole body betterment things for you and that will directly impact your ear um, if you are uh, an, an ear patient for one of these conditions. So um, that's pretty much the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and be sure to hit that bell so that you can get more of my videos um, uh, on your feed as they come on. All right. Thank you so much and take care. Bye bye.